Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ji Hun Chun, and I am a PhD student at the Technical University of Berlin under the supervision of Professor Martin Hank. Today, I'll be talking about finite sphere packings and sausage arrangements. So, first, I'll provide a quick introduction to packings. So, we let BD just be the d dimensional unit ball. And a subset is called a Subset C is called a packing set of the ball if for any two distinct points in C, if you place copies of the ball at those points, then, they're inter then the intersections um, of, the inter of the interiors of the balls will be empty. Yeah. So, okay. We let kappa d be the volume of the unit ball. Then the finite sphere packing density is simply the proportion of the convex hull of the spheres that is taken up by the spheres themselves. And we will let uh, delta sub n to d just be the um, density of the densest packing of n spheres in D dimensions. We'll be looking at a, a certain kind of packing throughout this talk. So we say that a finite packing is a sausage arrangement if the points of the packing set are placed as um, closely as possible on a single line. And we denote this set by S sub n to the D. And from construction, the volume and the vo uh, volume and density are um, as follows. So, how does the sausage compare in terms of density? Well, for for d equals two, when we just have circles, the densest packings has been uh, a, a lot of a lot of work and a lot of results done. Um, in particular, the sausage arrangement is never optimal for more more than two circles. So to to see this, you just take a sausage and then you cut it in half and place one half just on top of the other, as you can see in this diagram. Um, then this, then this resulting um, double two, the two layer packing on the right. This is denser than the sausage. Now, in um, okay for dimensions three and four, the dens density of the sausage is less than the dense the dense density of the densest known infinite. Um, packing in those dimensions. Um, however, this does not hold true once you reach dimension five, because in dimensions greater than or equal to five, the sausage is denser than the densest known infinite packing. So there is a diff so there is a difference between dimensions less than five and dimensions five five and above. Um, the sausage conjecture of Fayez Toth states that, in fact, for the, all dimensions greater than or equal to five, the sausage arrangement gives the densest finite packing of spheres. So, so no other arrangement um, is denser. Yeah. So now in dimensions three and four, the situation is that the densest packing, when, when you have a small number of spheres, the densest packing is a sausage. And when, when you have a large number of spheres, then the densest packing becomes full dimensional. And in fact, there's a, there's a more general result from, from Bitkin Gritzmann, from which it follows that the dimension of the 
densest packing can't be in between. So it has to be either one dimensional or full dimensional. There's no two dimension, no two dimensional packing can be the densest. So Jorg Wills coined the phrase sausage catastrophe to describe this phenomenon where the densest packing goes from one dimensional to full dimensional without passing through any intermediate dimensions. Okay, now we let n sub d be the first dimension where that happens. So it's first dimension um, where the densest packing is full dimensional. And so we already know that n sub two is equal to three. And for dimensions five and above, it is conjectured that the sausage is always optimal. So that leaves uh, dimensions three and four. So we asked the question, what are the values of N3 and N4? Okay. So we'll get to that later, but right now, um, first we'll talk about the sausage conjecture. So the, this conjecture has not yet been proven for all proven for all dimensions, and it has not been disproven for any specific dimension. However, a variety of partial results have been established, and we'll go through a few of these below. Uh, first of all, the sausage arrangement is optimal up to a constant factor, which is essentially independent of the dimension and the number of points. Uh, there have been some there's been some work on the shape of the packing. So in particular, it's optimal among all so-called moderately bent sausages. Okay, here's a graph of some other partial results for the sausage conjecture. So, so on, on the x-axis is the dimension of this space. On the y-axis, it's the dimension of the packing. So some early results from Beatke, Gritzman, and Wills, as well as the uh, previously mentioned result from Beatke, Gritzman, um, the conjecture is optimal among all packings that have low dimension uh, compared to the space which they're in. Uh, Beatke, Hank, and Wills showed that the conjecture is true for all sufficiently large dimension, regardless of of the number of points or the dimension of the packing. And the, these results have been improved by Hank and Bitkey and Hank uh, to a lower bound of 40 of 42 dimensions. So this conjecture is true for all um, D greater than or equal to 42. So, uh, um, so the main idea of the Beaky and Hank 98 paper is that um, if we first let uh, C, C be a finite packing and let's call the points X1 through Xn. Without loss of generality, let Xn equal zero. And then we let D of C be the Dirichlet Voronoi cell of of the packing at zero, and then D ring of C is the intersection of the Dirichlet Voronoi cell with, with the co convex, um, the convex hull. Okay. So a sausage arrangement has two, has two endpoints, one, one on either end of the sausage. And the Dirichlet Voronoi cells um, satisfy these qualities. So Beaky and Hank use a local approach. So they define the notion of an endpoint not just for sausages, but for a general finite sphere packing. And if such a if it's if for all um, finite packings, at most two endpoints exist, and the Dirichlet Voronoi cells satisfy this inequality, 
then that would that would show the sausage conjecture. The okay now the so so at the top we we have a sausage at the bottom we have a, a general packing and the idea is that these um, Dirichlet Voronoi cells in purple should have greater greater or equal volume than the Dirichlet Voronoi cells of the um, um, of the sausage. So the definition of, of an endpoint in general, it's, it's a bit um, delicate. So there it is. And, the, and an endpoint um, under this definition, it means that all of the other points of the packing are all, they're all located in one direction from the endpoint. Um, and, and they're all somewhat close to each other. Moreover, there are at most two endpoints in a packing, uh, because if there were three, then they would form a triangle, and you can't have a triangle with, ang with three angles all less than um, pi thirds. So you can only have you can only have two, although there there might be fewer. So these, these um, Dirichlet Voronoi cells, uh, they're quite, um, quite uh, challenging to find the volumes of. So, so they are split up via the nearest point map um, as follows. Then the volume of the Dirichlet Voronoi cell um, is equal to is just a sum of these d sub i uh, ring these these sets, and the terms on the right the these will be a little bit little bit um, easier to work with. So next, Beatke and Hank define certain um, configuration polytopes, P2 and P3. So P, P2 is, a, two, is a, a polygon and P3 is a polyhedron. And these are defined um, using, um, using these uh, terms Y1, Y2, and Y3. And they're specifically, so definition of these, so y sub j is just x sub j, but normalized. And for the purposes of the configuration polytopes, these are, these, these are reordered, these indices are reordered such that um, y1, y2, and y3 are in some sense as close to perpendicular as possible. So our project ex extends their work by introducing a four-dimensional configuration polytope, which is defined in, um, in the same way, except that there's an, an additional uh, term y, y4, and now P4 is a four-dimensional polytope. So with these, configuration polytopes, they help provide lower bounds for, the, for these volume terms. And there's, there's a lot of cases involved, but I'll just go over one of them. And one of them will, will in fact deal with P4. And each of these volumes is less than or equal to an, exter an external angle times an integral over a face times a kappa d, d minus i term, where i goes from zero to four. And there, and so the string of inequalities at the bottom, that's just how, 
how everything is broken down step by step. So you start with volume of the Dirichlet Voronoi cell intersected with the convex hull. Now you now you break it up using the using the nearest point map, and then it's split up again using external angles and integrals, and then a lower bound for for these for these terms is computed, and then the goal is for this lower bound to be greater than or equal to two kappa d minus one. Okay. Now, going from p three to p four, this addition does bring some. Um, this brings some benefits, but it also brings some challenges. So, since so the so the sausage only involves kappa d and kappa d minus one um, and for the volumes, but um, these volume lower bounds they have ter terms kappa d minus two through kappa d minus four, and since the limit of kappa d minus i over kappa d minus one goes to infinity as d goes to d goes to infinity as long as i is greater than one. Then these the volumes that are obtained from these configuration polytopes, so these volumes here, they will increase as d increases. So it's hard. So this this approach with this approach, it's harder to get. It's harder to show that the conjecture is true for lower uh, dimensions. Um, okay, now introducing P4 does, in general, increase the number of inequalities and variables, as well as complexity of any expression that we work with. And but the Perhaps the more the more uh, sudden change deals with the specific calculations involved with the external angle and integrals, because in in three dimensions or less, you have a you have a sphere in three dimensions then. Then, there. Then we we will we have um, spherical triangles, and we have to find the area areas of these spherical triangles. That's easy to find. The simple form. There are simple formulas for that. And also, in lower dimensional uh, count, counterparts, are essentially trivial. However, once you once you get to dimension four. And you have a spherical tetrahedron on on the surface of the four-dimensional ball. Then there's no I do not know of any simple formula for in general. And the only formulas I know they're they're extremely complicated. Um, yeah. So due to due to points two and three. It is, we found it infeasible to find lower bounds purely by hand. And so we use interval arithmetic for certain portions of the proof. And that's, and that's what we found was necessary to get the results that we want. And so, um, so our result is that the sausage conjecture is true for all dimensions d greater than or equal to thirty six. So, so we've improved over over uh, d greater than or equal to forty two. And so. Um, some some future possibilities would be to 
look at higher dimensional configuration polytopes. So instead of just P4, we look at P5, P6, P7. And this is, this is possible, but they result in more, more complexity in the calculations. Everything, everything I said about going from dimension three to four also applies here. And interval arithmetic will be more, more widespread because spherical tetrahedra and higher dimensional spherical simplices will be more prevalent. So computational time is going to become a problem. So another, another possibility might be to try to increase the efficiency of the, of the lower bounds for existing configuration polytopes. So here, these lower bounds here, um, where it says edges, faces, and facets, and we, we do not use all of the edges, faces, or facets. We just, we just use the ones that, in, in most cases, we just use the ones that contain the origin. So this polytope has other, um, other faces that, are, that we, we don't include in our lower bounds. So if, if we can find a way to do so, then that would improve, improve these lower bounds. Um, okay, now, uh, now we'll move to the sausage catastrophe. Okay, um, as mentioned earlier, we want to locate the values of N3 and N4. Okay, so we, it is already known that um, N sub D is greater than D for these particular values of D. And N3 is only known, there's a fairly wide range for N3, it's only the lower bound is from Borowski Jr. and which is five. And the upper bounds are from Gandini and Wills and, and Scholl. And it, it is conjectured that N3 is actually equal to 56. So that would mean that the densest packings of five spheres through 55 sphere, spheres, they're all sausages. So that's, but it's not, um, it's not known for sure. In the case of dimension four, so much less is known in this case. Um, so N, N4 is only known, um, known to be between five and 367,300. Um, so lower bound is from Beatkin Gritzman, and then the upper bound is from Gandini and Zuko. And they conjecture that N, N4 is actually greater than 300,000. So that's, that's still a um, significant, significant uh, range. So the main idea of Gandini and Zuko can be described in, in three steps. First of all, they take the D4 lattice, which is the densest known infinite packing in four dimensions, and you and let G of P um, for a polytope, let G of P be the number of points um, of D4 that are inside P. So once you have this lattice, you take a large enough bounded subset and consider the fine and then intersect it with D4 and consider the finite packing set X intersect D4. And finally, compare this large finite packing set with, with a sausage that, that has the same number of points. Um, if it can be shown that the vo volume of the convex hull of, um, of the packing plus the ball 
is less than the volume of the convex hull of the sausage, first of all, then the density of the packing will, will be greater than the density of the sausage. So with this outline in mind, now the goal is to construct a suitable X and then to find the find G of X and then and also the volume. And then you and then you have your answer. So uh, can, so what they do is they define a sequence of 24 cells as follows. So in particular, X1 is the Dirichlet Voronoi cell of D4 lattice, and then X, X sub M is just a scaled version of X1. And so G of XM can be, can be uh, calculated. It's a polynomial in M. And that, okay, so the next, next thing is to calculate the volume. And for that, um, Steiner's formula is a way to calculate the volume of, for a, for a polytope to, to find the volume of P plus B to the D in terms of these intrinsic volumes, as well as kappa D minus I terms. And the um, intrinsic volumes themselves can be simplified further. Um, okay, and once, okay, what, once this is applied, um, the volume of, this, of the convex hull, um, since since x sub m contains points of d4 at the vertices you can we can write it just as the volume of x sub m plus b4 and this term is in fact the polynomial in m so now we have we have the number of points of of d4 and then we also have the volume so here is a chart of the densities of X of M intersect D4. So the orange line at, at the top um, is, is the density of D4. The green line in the middle, this is the density of the sausage arrangement. And then these blue diamonds, these are the densities of um, X, XM intersect D4. And as you can see, up to, up to and including X16, these are less dense than the sausage. But once you, once you reach X17, that becomes denser than the corresponding sausage. And X17 has 375,769 points. Okay. So uh, Gandini and Zuko state that from X17, it's possible to truncate this polytope to get below 367,300 points. Um, but in the paper, it is not specified um, exactly what truncations are, are performed. Um, so what, what I've been working on is to truncate truncate um, facets of this 24 cell. So we take three dis pairwise disjoint facets of X sub M, and then we define X sub M to the minus T as the 24 cell X sub M, but with one of the faces, one of the facets truncated. And then, we def and then X sub M to the minus T1, T2, T3, as X of M with, all, with up to three um, of these disjoint facets being truncated. And so we want to find uh, G of X of M to the minus T1, T2, T3, and also the, vo and also the uh, volume for various values of T1, T2, T3. We want to test different amounts of truncations and see 
what results they give. So this is um, a diagram of the 24 cell and the three facets in red are just completely disjoint from each other. And, in, in, and um, another way to see this is, is these um, truncations, they're designed to remove one, one or more layers of spheres uh, on the facets. That. So since these three, the three facets mentioned earlier, since they're disjoint, um, as long as we truncate them by a small enough amount, then the truncated facets will still be disjoint. And then we can write G of X sub M to the minus T1, T2, T3, um, just as a, as a sum of, just how, as a sum, um, this was a difference. And then similarly for the volume. So this problem reduces to sim simply finding G of XM to the minus T and volume of XM to the minus T plus B4. So we've reduced the case of three uh, truncated facets to just one truncated facet. And and um, these quantities can be written as polynomials in M and T. Um, just similar to the situation with x with x sub m, but these are more complicated. So, so yes, yeah, so we have volume. So, the um, in the equation below we have vol 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 three is just a th three dimensional volume. Area is two dimensional, and then this l just means the length. So in summary, we take these the two quantities at the top, then we write them in more simpler terms and then show they can be written as, as polynomials, which are um, quite conducive to computation. So what do we get when we vary T1 T2 and T3, well, we, we get this. So as before, the green line is the density of the sauce, sausage and the blue, um, the blue diamonds are the um, densi densities of X of M. And now, the small uh, circles, these are the densities of these truncated um, 24 cells. They're color coded based on whether they're denser than the sausage or less dense than the sausage. So you can see that especially to towards the middle and the left, the densities of the truncated um, 24 cells, they're less dense than um, X15 and X16 on, on the left in the middle. So this makes sense because in, instead of taking a 24 cell, which is probably close to being optimal, um, you're tr truncating um, facets from it so it becomes a little, little less ideal. However, the advantage is that since you can vary T1, T2, and T3 um, to a, an extent that you can't do with just, just the sequence X of M, 
they there's a lot, lot of granularity and they really fill the gap between x16 and x17 and provide lots of intermediate um, numbers of points and intermediate packing densities so the particular place where this the, the curve of of these um these trun truncated dense the the dent, where the curve of the truncated um 24 cells where that intersects the sausage that happens about 330,000. so if we zoom in a little bit more okay so um so the so so the result is that there exists a truncation of x17 with 331,172 um, spheres which is still denser than the corresponding sausage and so have an N4 less than or equal to 331,172, which is roughly a 10% improvement over the existing um, the existing upper bound for N4. Um, so some some other uh, direct some future directions where this project can go is to is to just look at other other truncations. Um, namely vertices, edges, and faces of X of M. So these, uh, these lower dimensional um, faces, edges, and vertices, so when these are truncated, they'll, they will take off fewer spheres than facets do. So this is something that is probably is probably well suited for a secondary um, set of truncations. So after after truncating the fa facets, then truncate lower lower dimensional objects. Um, another another direction is is from the other from the other end, um, just try to find lower bounds for N4. There's very, very little known about that. So that's something um, that, that could be worked on. And finally, we, can, we let uh, capital N sub D be the minimum N such that for all for um, any number for that number of spheres so for n spheres or any number greater than n spheres the densest packing is always four dimensional so that's because it might so for for instance in the in the three-dimensional case while the in 50, for 56 spheres it's known for 56 spheres, the densest packing is known to be four dimensional. For 58 spheres, the densest packing is also known to be four dimensional. But for 57 dimensions, that is not known. And it might actually be a sausage for 57 spheres. So it is a question of, where, of to what extent um, this phenomenon also occurs in four dimensions. So, all right, that's that's it. Uh, thank you for your attention.